Hello, this is Jason Miller with Aspen Now Solutions, where we aim to unlock the power of ServiceNow. Just want to take a second to thank everyone. Uh, as I noted last time, uh, we are up over 3,500 views and uh, over 100 subscribers. Uh, the goal for this year is to hit 1,000 a, a subscribers, so if you can, tell your friends, family, coworkers, whoever, um, to please hit the subscribe button. And also, I'd like to give a special shout out to the international subscribers. Um, you guys have really been pulling your weight, and I, I, I really appreciate it. So, um, without further ado, let's move on to today's topic, which is part two of incident alert management. So, if you recall the last time, uh, we had talked about the incident alert management features, and then also uh, what's installed with incident alert management. Uh, we went ahead with the plugin, and then um, uh, we did a couple other things there too. Um, today, what we're going to focus on is creating a contact responsibility, uh, which is rather uh, a simple task to perform. But then we move on to creating a contact definition, which is a little bit different. So, um, for those of you who uh, are subscribers to this channel because of SLAs, we will be using the condition builder for some of these. I've already built some out. Um, so, it looks pretty simple, but uh, when I got into it, I noticed that with the form, as the form changed, um, there were different things that happened to uh, the, the definitions here that we created for the contacts. So um, one particular thing that I, I noticed was that um, the source and the source field those were especially important. So I'll go over those. And what we'll do is uh, just remember that the methodology for um, this or the thesis of this YouTube channel is that to demonstrate um, how ServiceNow works, not really through looking at the documentation, but what happens in the tool. So we'll move on to contact uh, responsibilities. This was pretty straightforward. Uh, when you create a new contact, and, um, as you can see here, I created two. One was Aspen Now Team, and the other one was Aspen Now Team Lead. And ServiceNow did a great job of creating a whole bunch here um, for you to, uh, to look at. And I wanted to note that there are a couple that, with every incident out of the box, every incident alert, um, that will be standard. Um, they get attached to... Uh, the records, the incident alert records. So, and we'll see those in just a couple of minutes uh, when we create some uh, incident alerts. So, if I were to click new here on contact responsibilities, again, really simple. You put in the name, and then it's either a user or a group. So, we won't waste much time there. Uh, then we come to our contact definitions. So, as you can see here, I created. Um, well, there there are basically four that I created. And uh, two, the source is default override, which I'll go over in a second. And then two come from the form field. And these are, these are different um, in many different ways. So what I'm going to do, my methodology for, for today's segment is going to be to keep one of them active. Um, and then I'm going to show you kind of how it responds to the conditions. And then after that, I'll mark it false. And then I'll move on to the next one. Um, so if you wanted to take a look at one of the ones that ServiceNow has created, um, out of the box. So this one says that incident alert, and like I said, there are a couple roles here that will get automatically attached um, when an incident alert uh, occurs. Um, this basically says incident alert must have incident manager. And now this one's a default override. So what it's saying is um, whatever's happening down here, um, make sure you include, and this one's at the user level, so it's say include Lucy Barnes. Um, for whatever these conditions are. So here there are no conditions. So um, to me what this is saying, anytime the incident alert opens, uh, Lucy Barnes is going to be our, our user. So I made some that were probably a little bit more complicated, but hey, that's life, right? I mean, they come, uh, the customer comes to us with user requirements and they say, hey, uh, we had these certain really ridiculous scenarios that you need to program into the system. So what do I say? Hey, not a problem. So let's let's take a stab at it. So the first one that I had created was this Aspen team form field. Um, the type is a group. Uh, the source is the form field. And the, the source field, really, there's only one, is assignment group. Our responsibility here, um, remember we created this one. There's one of two, right? There's Aspen now team. Um, and then there was the one that was just for the individual user. Um, and then here I put a condition in. I said severity has to be medium for this thing to fire. So what I'm going to do now is, just like with the last one, you know what, I'm going to refresh this because I think, oh, okay, it's working fine. Um, I'm going to create an incident. 
<clears throat> and then I'm going to create an incident alert from the incident. I demonstrated this last time, so I'll put in Honest Abe here. Um, and then I'm going to save it. And if you recall, uh, if you want to create an incident alert, it's not here in the hamburger menu. What you have to do is the UI action is below in a related link. So you would click on Create Incident Alert. And then it tells you here, default contacts added. Instant alert created, and then it dumps some stuff in the background, and we'll put in um, test. Um, maybe we'll even put in what was the name of it that we were using? Uh, Aspen Now Team. So let's see here. And I apologize for all the uh, the tabs. It's just that it goes a lot faster if I have the tabs set out for you. So. I want to make this as fast as possible. So if we look down here, what was it? It was at the group level. Uh, we don't see uh, Aspen now in there. We see our user contacts. Lucy there, yes, she's here. Um, it looks like we have a duty manager, a duty director, an incident manager. Those are our defaults out of the box. Um, our group contacts are our service desk emergency and our network prices. I'm assuming those are also out of the box um, standard. So uh, what did we say we wanted? We wanted a severity of medium for this thing to trigger. So let's see if this works. Hit save. And let's scroll down now. And now we'll see here. OK, Aspen, Aspen Now Team is here. Um, and I don't think we have an assignment group. Because remember that in our definition, uh, let's see here. Yeah, it says assignment group, but it's blank. So now we'll have to add a. Uh, an assignment group, and I'm going to put in ITSM engineering, and let's see what happens. Okay, ITSM engineering appears there. So that's one thing that we'd have to be cognizant of, um, maybe before building this thing out to make assignment group required, because we're going to have situations like that. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark this inactive and hit save. Great, and now I'm going to activate this one, which is the Aspen Now team. But what I did was I put in a default override, and we're going to see how this works a little bit differently. Because when you put in, uh, well, there we go. I should have refreshed this one. <clears throat> so when we um, when we select default override, and I'll show you what happens when we hit form field. See how the uh, the related list goes away. And if we were to hit none, there's going to be a quantity field that, that pops up here. And it's going to say, this is the maximum amount of users um, or groups that you can have for, for, this, um, uh, for this type right here. So I didn't uh, do any that were none. I figured that that was probably the, the, e the easy one that you could, um, you could do yourself. So I want to do something a little bit more complicated. Um, so default override here. Uh, basically, what this is saying is um, if... I uh, put a condition in, uh, event type is outage, then we're going to have, um, let's see here, since it's group, I guess group value is going to be ITSM engineering, and then um, if it's failover, we're going to have it Aspen now. So um, let me just go ahead and make sure that we save that there. Now one other trick to it <clears throat> is that you'll have the severity here is major. Um, for the for this specific one for the, for the condition if you didn't want a condition in here You don't have to have one um, just like I showed you that Lucy Barnes example They didn't have a condition in here, but I kind of wanted to show you what you can do with a tool if you want to put in different conditions So at this point, uh, we're gonna change this. What are we gonna do here? I think we might make a new one actually so I'm going to change the severity to low Hit save and then I'm going to do an insert and stay. So that creates a new record right there. And now let's go back to uh, our conditions here. So we want severity to equal major. And then we want, so we want a major outage. That's what we want here, major outage. So I'm going to put in severity as major. And then event type is outage. And we'll go down to the group level and we'll see what, what happened there. Okay, so it looks like ITSM engineering is there. And is that correct? Let's see. ITSM engineering, great. 
Now, what we want to do is do a failover. Now, that should change it to Aspen now. So let's try that. Failover. Save. And now you see here, it changes the group. So pretty nice um, setup there. Um, so that way you can change the, like down in the, in the related list there, you can have many different scenarios going on in, uh, in an incident alert, which, you know, these guys really thought ahead. And, you know, I just like to thank ServiceNow uh, for coming up with this because I think it's pretty neat. So um, now we're going to go down to the user level. I'm going to mark this one active and now save it. Now, all this is saying is that uh, we want our condition is event type is SLA delay. So, and then our source field is going to be whatever's in the assigned to. So now, and I'm going to change this assigned to, I don't know who I'm going to make it. Let's try it with someone with an A. Maybe Abe. Let's see if something's going to, oh, that's right. It has to be part of ITSM engineering. So what I'm going to do is clear this out. Um, and again, you know, th this would depend on what kind of configuration you guys set up. Um, whether you require the assigned to to um, to be conditional based on uh, what's going on here with the uh, assignment group. Okay, um, playing hard to get, huh? All right, so uh, let's just put in here, I don't know, David Liu. Sounds good to me. And now, let's see what our condition was. SLA delay is our event type. SLA delay, I'm just going to change the severity low, and we want this to insert and stay. All right, default contacts added. Let's see what here happens here. User contact, so Aspen now, team lead, David Liu is there, so that, that responsibility popped up with the corresponding user. Um, so yeah, I think we're, we're good to go, because we took it right from the uh, assigned to and put populated it. Great. So now I'm going to mark this one inactive and we'll do our last one for today. All right. So this one, again, the user level, but we're doing default override here. Um, now there's a little bit of a trick to this because what I wanted to do was I demonstrated this principle in one of my other videos on how to dot walk. So remember that um, you know, ServiceNow is basically this, con this platform with a bunch of tables on it. And some of them are related, some of them are not. Um, so what we want to do is, and I'll show you how to set this up. I basically said that the source incident, the priority has to be one in order for this to happen. So I'll show you right now how to set this up. So I'm going to look for source incident is, but I don't really care about that, right? What I want to find is the dot priority. So I want to dot walk it. So you have to do show related fields. And now... You see this little arrow here points to the uh, incident fields. Now we can go find priority. And looky here, it all pops up there. So I'll just get rid of that. You can rewind that and uh, do it for yourselves, make it for homework. And you'll have it there. I'm going to mark it active. Um, and then basically what this is saying is if the source incident, the priorities, is one, um, then go ahead and do whatever whatever's in the default override box down here. So um, condition, severity equals major, and then we have severity equals high. So these two should change, these two user values should change based on this condition right here. So let me go ahead and save this, and while I'm doing that, I'm going to check and make sure this is inactive. Okay, this is inactive, and I'm just going to save that one more time just to be sure. get kind of paranoid about these things sometimes. So I'm going to go back to incident.do because if I recall correctly, this priority was uh, was not a one on the source incident. And where we could check that, I believe it was yeah, right down here, the, the, um, the related incidents. Hmm, I wonder if I could change the priority from here. Now it looks like it's locked down. That'd be kind of cool if it did. Uh, maybe I could even go to, nah, you know what? Let's do a fresh one. Let's do incident.do. And that way, it'll give us another opportunity to go over this process of how this is done. Uh, let's see here. I want to put in old Abe. And remember, priority out of the box. 
uh, cannot manipulate it, but I can I can manipulate impact and I can sure uh, manipulate urgency here. So now we have a priority one, fantastic. And now I'm going to say you know P1. Uh, please take care of ASAP. Excellent. And we can see the related searches going on here now. Kind of a neat feature, huh? Um, let's see here. Now I'm going to save this. We'll scroll down. Create our incident alert. Now we'll see our default contacts are, have been added. It gives a little message there. Incident alert has been created. And uh, now let's go down to our user contact and see who's there. Looks like our Aspen Now team lead has popped up. Okay. Now let's see here. But we don't have a user, right? So that's fine. Um, but in order to get that user, remember what needs to happen? We need to have either major or high as our severity. So this thing will fire. It's just that it's not going to populate anything if I put in conditions right here. So if I put in no conditions, um, then that would be a little bit different. Um, and I talked about in another segment how this order right here is, is kind of important. So you should definitely get a good understanding of that. Um, let's see here. So what did I want to do? Oh, yeah, severity. So now we're going to do major for this one. And I'm going to put in a description. And we'll see what populates there. So let's hit save. Okay, Jason M appears. Great. And now we want to do hi for Abe to appear. And you can do this with any of these, these fields here. Um, you should be able to um, use those also if you want to for your conditions. And uh, let's see here. Let's hit save for it to be high. And it'll change it down here. So we change it to, to Abe Lincoln. So that gives us a good fundamental understanding of, um, you know, how the um, how to create um, these different users, uh, the responsibilities uh, for the contacts, um, and also um, when, we, when we take a look back at the uh, documentation, we see here, you know, here's the the contact responsibility. That that's no problem. It's really when you get into the definition, that gets a lot harder because you have um, a lot of conditions that can possibly put in there. However, this is to your benefit because, like I said, in the real world, uh, this is um, what will um, probably drive your user requirements is that there's more complicated scenarios out there than just what comes out of the box. Um, if you get a chance, I would click on this create a default override. Um, I showed you how it works um, in the tool but you might want to read up on it and get a good understanding. Uh, one other thing I wanted to do today, oh, and this is what the incident alerts table looks like. Um, you can ma manipulate it just like any other table. I'll refresh the list. And you can see here we just we made a bunch. So um, let's see here. Yeah, so uh, you know, these four are probably the ones that we, we created today. Um, one thing I wanted to note was last time I talked about an example of good scripting and I went into I think it was a UI policy and couldn't find the script uh, so I went over the, um, the, the, the condition builder um, the options that were in there but here I wanted to just talk about this adding info from a source incident um, I thought this is a really um, good example of the way ServiceNow thinks and the way they script um, so anything out of the box uh, if you can take a look at um, the, you know, the scripts there or the client scripts um, they give you um, a good good example of the way they um, structure these things and the way they think. So I really like this one because I think this is very, very uh, helpful and you can apply it to other things, other tables. So this is me, Jason Miller. This concludes today's session. I'm the founder of Aspen Now Solutions. Uh, please feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, I think I said last segment, there were a lot of recruiters contacting me. Um, right now, I'm kind of uh, in the middle of talking to some parties there about the next opportunity. Um, so, um, as I like to say, we've just unlocked the power of service now. Uh, thanks and have a great day.